My name is Eve and I am an architect and the BIM consultant at HECAD. Our mission is building BIM together, which means that we align our clients' needs and develop solutions for continuous BIM acceleration. Our promise to clients is reducing BIM stress. We help to eliminate tasks that do not create value. Sorry about that. Okay, and what will this webinar be about? So, I will show you how to automatically create individual roof panels according to any architectural roof shape, then create timber or steel rafter structures for roofs in Revit models, define detailed multi-layer timber, steel, roof framing in a snap using fully customizable rules and templates, and finally automate shop drawings including sorting, tagging, dimensioning, and scheduling of all frames. Wood framing roof lets Revit users initially create prefabricated wood frame roof panels, wooden truss, and rafter systems of any shape or complexity, perform structural analysis, and generate custom shop drawings. Functions are versatile, parameters are easy to control, and changes occur in real time. Previously, as you may already know, a wood framing roof uh, could do only prefabricated structures and truss structures. And now we included rafter functionality in our Roof Plus tool. So now with our Roof Plus, you will not only be able to create prefabricated panels, but in the very similar manner, you will be able to generate rafters. So previously in our Roof Plus, you had uh, the ability to create only prefabricated panels you will have a possibility to also create rafter systems. So still, you will have a roof created in your model, uh, in your Revit model. Then you will be able to automatically split the roof by faces because, as you may know, Revit cannot automatically split the roof by faces like that. And it would be al almost impossible to just draw uh, it manually, all these faces, so that they would connect correctly. And then also we would be able to frame the roof. Uh, with uh, Roof Plus, with the Raptor features. So these new Raptor features are much better than the old Raptor tool. Okay, so now let's go ahead to the live demonstration. So I already have a Revit model opened and right here you can see that I have some walls uh, exterior walls framed in my model and in this demonstration I will create a raptor system on this architectural roof that you can see right here. So as I mentioned before uh, framing the roof, uh, before creating the raptors, we have to model it in Revit. So this is just a simple roof that was modeled in Revit, nothing special. And now, uh, now there's this is everything that I can do in Revit. Now I have to use our Roof Plus tool, with which I will split this roof, I will create the configurations, I will create the raptors, and finally create shop drawings. So let's jump right in. Uh, before using the tool, uh, you should know that the roof should be created correctly. So uh, it depends on the roof structure. So you can see right now that in my roof structure, I have five layers, so one layers for the main frame, so for the rafters, then I have two sheeting layers, I have a layer for the battens and for the roofing. It's important because later I will be able to map configurations to these layers. So I will create rules for each of these layers, so as you understand, the possibilities are unlimited. Okay, so this is my roof structure, and before framing it, I have to split the roof into uh, panels, into regions, by roof faces, by the slopes. So I will just use functionality from the Raptor menu, and um, yes, sorry, yes, split right here, and and that's it. And the roof automatically split the roof. So I will go to my free review created for framing. And you can see that now I have individual roofs created by faces automatically. Okay, and now, uh, now I'll take a look at the roof links. So now we'll start to use uh, 
functionality for framing. And before that, uh, with our tool, you should load families and schedules, and the tool will load all of the structural framing elements that will be used for framing this roof. And then we can create, for example, the roof link. So let's take a look at the roof link. And that is why I mentioned that the structure of the roof is very important, because now we can map configurations to each of these layers created in Revit. So for example, to this layer, uh, I can say that here I want to add the mainframe, and I want to use this configuration. Right here, I want to use buttons, sorry, and use this configuration. Here I want to add the roofing and use this configuration. Also, I not only want to frame these layers, but for some of them, I want to add insulation. So for the main rafter layer, I will also split insulation. Uh, you will see that. Uh, so when I create this roof link, I am ready to frame. But the question is, how are these configurations created? So they are created by the user. You can create them by your own standards, and they can be created only one time and used again and again. So let's take a look at where they are created. So I'll go to the framing configuration window. And right here in this window, we can create our configurations for the roof frame. Okay, um, I just checked the question and I can see that you hear echoes in the sound. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to use the best microphone. I hope that not uh, a lot of you are experiencing issues regarding that. Okay, so now uh, to continue about the configurations. Right here, you can create configurations for the buttons, for the mainframe, for the roofing, and for the secondary frame. So, for example, let's take a look at the rafters. And right here, we have configuration names. So, you, when you will load the tool, you will have a few configurations already loaded with the software. So, you will just save the configuration with your own name. You will save it, and that's it. And then, you will be able to use it in your future project. So, you can even put it on a server, in a shared location, so all of your colleagues would have an access to it and uh, then that means that it needs to be created only one time so all of these settings you set them one time and then use it in the future okay and what can you do in these settings you can set the main type that will be used for the joists and the spacing then you can also uh, frame openings so for example you can create different configurations for window framing opening framing is for NP openings and window and Window join framing is for windows that are close to each other. These are similar, so let's take a look at one of the openings configurations. And for the openings configurations, again, you can create your own and you can save it and use it in the future, so it needs to be created only one time. And right here we can set how we want the trimming joists to be added, what kind of header do we need, so we can choose from the types that are added right here, or I can choose custom header type, and right here you can create your own header, so the possibilities are almost unlimited. I can just add new elements here, uh, I can add more elements, I can say that I want to rotate them uh, to the internal side, and so on. So as you can see, you can create any type of header, and the same goes for the other element right here, for the bottom header. You can also configure that uh, by your own needs and save it. We can also add uh, inner type trimmers and outer type trimmers and set their position, for example, from the sill to the header, from the sill to top plate, and so on. And we can add other joists and, and offsets around the opening. So when we create these uh, rules, we just save it and set it right here. And then we can also add end connections and add joists and bridging, nulling, and blocking is for horizontal elements. So we just choose the element type that we want to add right here and the rule by which it will be added. So for example, uh, with this rule, I will add one element. Uh, I will area it from the base to external side of the roof, and this is the offset from the base. So that is uh, quite simple. And later, of course, I can add a lot of horizontal elements by a lot of different rules. But actually, now I will use only one rule, and other ones I will show you how to add later, because we also have a possibility to add them only on some of the slopes if we don't need them on all of them. And we can also add secondary joist system if you would like your every second or every third joist or after to be different and all kinds of additional elements that are added later after we frame the roof.
So when we create this configuration, we save it, yeah, and we make sure that it's set in the roof lake. So it's correct. I want to use this configuration for my structure layer of my roof. And that's it. And now I can just select all roofs and frame them. And now the tool is distributing all those structural framing elements into the roof. So the elements are being distributed by the configuration that I've just showed you. So the spacing will be correct, the element types will be there, and uh, now the tool is creating five roof frames. Yes, because we have five slopes. So two are already framed and we can already see the rafters. And the one horizontal element is right here that is added by the configuration. Yes, so you can see that when the configuration is, cre is created, uh, it's just a matter of one click. I just click on frame roof and that's it. So when you want, when you create the configuration for the first time, you just use it in the future. Yes, and one slope is left. And we will be able to continue and add all other elements like ridges, ridges, valleys, girder beams, and color beams. Okay, so now you can see that the raptors are added and everything looks very good. It's just that, of course, they are not aligned as you can see. So uh, it's very simple to do to align them. So for example, uh, let's think how do I want to align them. Let's say that I will in the Align Elements menu and I will so align the jars with other elements. So like this and these slopes will be aligned. And of course I should pay attention to the wall stop plate. Yes, so let's say that I will leave these like that. It looks okay. And I also want to show you that we can align our roof by the wall's top lead. So I will use this face to selected face, select the top lead face, then the raptor's face, and the whole raptor, the whole face with raptors will be aligned to this wall's top lead. Yeah, and that's it. And it's aligned as you can see. So now I will do uh, the same for this slope. I will select and align them together. So as you can see, it's really easy to align all of your slopes, all of your raptors on different slopes like this. Okay, and it's also aligned with the studs of the walls as you can see. Okay, and now uh, we can continue and add other elements. So, first of all, let's say we will add the ridges. So I will use Insert Ridge, select this line, and I will choose the configuration because for the ridges, we can also create configurations, how they are added. So for this roof, I will use the standard ridge. I will show you a couple of different ways that the ridge can be added. So it's added already. And you can see that in this configuration, I'm using this standard ridge. And it's automatically cutting the raptors. And another configuration that I will show you is I will insert a beveled ridge on top of the roof. Okay, with beveled ridge on top. So you'll see another way, like this. Yes, yeah, so I just want you to know that it's a matter of our configuration, how they're added. They can be added in a number of different ways. And now I can insert hip and valley raptors. And also select a configuration for the hips and valleys, and they are also added, as you can see, like this, and this one, and everything is cut 
and joined correctly. So how these ridges and valleys were added by the Raptor configuration. And right here again, we can create it and save it by our own name and use it in the future. And here we just predefine the type that will be used for the hip, for the valley, for the ridge, and for the girder. And that's it. And then we use it like this. It's added in one click later. Okay, so now when I have all my ridges, valleys, and hips added, um, what else can I do is I can add some additional boards to my roof. So as I mentioned, right now in the configuration, I predefined only this one horizontal element, but actually we can add many more. So I will modify this frame and I will turn on a couple of more rules. So I will turn on these three boards that will be added to the bottom of the rafters. And you can see that they're added. And I will also do the same for the slope. So you could see that they connect nicely. Apply. Three elements are added. This is the offset from the base, the spacing, and the elements type. Soffit board. Okay. And these boards are also added right here. Okay. And also, what can we do right now is uh, we can cut the rafters with the wall stop blade. So as you can see right now, the rafters are added, but they intersect with the wall stop blade and they are not cut. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not necessary to do something. Uh, we can just cut with the uh, external element. So I will use cut menu. And I will cut the beams with solid. I will select the stop lead. And you can see that it's cut. And for example, I can also cut this. Yeah, I could go ahead and do that for the whole group, but I want to save our time. So I won't do that. And you can see that the raptors are cut by the wall's top lead, like this. Okay, and now what else I want to show you is I want to frame the color beams. So for the colors, I actually created a separate uh, roof without any slopes, and I will frame this roof with the color beams. So you can see that I created two roofs. That is because uh, that is because I have this. Uh, roof that is intersecting another roof so it it was causing some unwanted geometry changes in Revit so that's why I just did two of them so you can see that we have a workaround uh, for these kind of situations it works really well and before framing the color beams I also want to add girder beams on these two slopes of my roof so again I will modify this roof and this time uh, I will not add those three parts they're already added I will add the girder joist okay so it will be added right here yeah you can see that it's added and it's automatically it, it cuts the raptors automatically and i want to do the same for this slope okay Yes, again, it's cutting the rafters. And now what I want to do is I want to join these smaller roofs to the bigger ones. So I will just do that with standard Revit functionality. Here we'll select this one and then smaller one. And then this loop and this loop. And I will do the same for this small roof I have right here. Okay, 
and now you can see that they look like this. They are joined. Like this. And that's it. And now the logic is the same as with this roof. It's just a roof with its own structure and with its own roof link. So now you can see that I, you, I am using different configuration for the color frame for this roof. So I'll just select them both and use frame roof. And that's it. And now the tool is distributing the color raptors by a completely different configuration. And you can see that they're already added and everything looks really good. They're standing on these girder beams, except for one thing, of course, they are not aligned. So again, it's very simple. I will just open the Align Elements menu and use Align Just Face to select it. Face, select them. Yes, and for the smaller roof, they will be aligned like this. And I will do the same for this one. And that's it. And they are perfectly aligned. And of course, you can create different end cuts. These families are fully editable. You can edit all kinds of parameters right here uh, and modify them as you like. And their position you can align them differently and, and so on this is just a, an example okay and now what else do I want to show you is I want to show you more possibilities for the girders so I can actually add a girder uh, not only by the configuration but in this menu I have an opportunity to insert the girder so I will select let's say this valley and this raptor so between these two elements i will add a girder so i will i can choose the element type that i want to use so in this example i will choose this standard one this girder joist and right here i can add an offset from the ridge or from the level so where it will be inserted okay and that's it and it's added and you can see that again, it's cutting the raptors just automatically. And what I wanted to show you this is that now this is an external element and it's not considered a part of the frame by the tool. So we can add it to the frame and we can not just simply add it, but add it with a cut. So I will, you, I will open this menu and I have functionality to add external girder with perpendicular split. I can just add it or I can add it with a split. So let's take a look how that looks. And you can see that the girder will automatically split the rafters that it intersects. Yeah, and that's it. And the rafters are split like this. And another way of adding the girder that I want to show you is we can add a beveled girder. So I will again use insert girder. Let's say I will select these two same elements. But this time I will add a different offset, obviously. And I will use a beveled girder. So you will see the difference. Okay. And you can see that this time I have this kind of element. Instead of this, I have this one. Okay, so these were two examples of how we can add girders. And now, again, I want to show another thing that we can split them. So, for example, uh, you can see that this girder is probably too long, so it would need to be split. And we can also do that. So, I will open split elements menu and I will split this girder by this raptor right here. And you can see that it's split like this.
Okay, and now uh, what else do I want to show you? I think that uh, it's everything about the main Raptor layer uh, because now I can add all other layers because you can remember, Miri, that in the roof link I also added the, not only the mainframe but the battens and the roofing and also insulation. So uh, perhaps now I will show the insulation. So uh, I can select, for example, uh, all roofs in my model and I can split parts for these roofs. And what the tool will do, it will split the sheeting parts. So I have two layers of sheeting and also it will split the insulation between my rafters and the insulation of course will also be calculated. So you will see that when I will turn on the parts visibility in, uh, in my view because now it's turned off. Okay, so now the parts are split and I can turn on the parts visibility and you can see right here I will select the sheeting layer. Okay, this is the sheeting that is split and also the insulation was split uh, between the raptors so we will easily be able to calculate all of it. And of course, it's predefined by the user, so you can create any size that you need. This is just an example. And I also want to show you it in the bottom. That is the shape of the bottom insulation part is correct. Okay, so now I will go back to the original view and add other layers. So now I will again select all roofs and use add battens. And again, the tool is distributing those structural framing elements, battens, by the configuration that I created, so perpendicular to the raptors. Okay, so now it's framing the five slopes, and when it's done, we will be able to add the roofing. Okay, and as you can see, the battens are added. And now finally we can add the roof. So again, I will, I will select the roofs and add roofing. So you'll see that the five slopes will be framed but with the final layer and then I will show you how we can also automatically tag all elements in our drawings and dimension them. Yes and again all these metal elements are added automatically and you will get all of these structural framing families and all of these configurations together with the software so it will be much easier for you to just modify them by your own needs. Okay, and I can see that the roof is framed. You can see all of these metal roofing elements are added automatically. Okay, I think it looks really, really good. And now what I'm missing is 
the valley and rapture camps. So I also I can insert all ridge camps. The configuration, OK. Yes, and you can see these ridge caps are added. And also, I can add hip and valley caps. OK. Like that. So now that I have the whole frame, we can take a look at the drawings. So I created a couple of views uh, with the elements filtered out. So with the main raptors, with the roof battens and the roofing. And now uh, I can automatically tag them and dimension them. Dimension them. So before doing that, in the numbering setup, I can see what, how do I want to number them. So I want to st sort structural framing by the mark. I want to number uh, the roofs and the parts. So I will just use uh, number elements, and I need to do that only one time before, uh, I mean, after we frame the whole roof, and it will number all structural framing elements in my Revit model. So now all of the raptors and the uh, battens and the roofing elements are all being numbered, so we will see the numbers appear automatically in the tags. Yes, and that's it. And now I can, with Revit, tag all structural framing elements. Structural framing tags, choose add tag. OK. Yeah, and that's it. And we can see the elements are automatically numbered and tagged. OK, and also I can dimension them automatically. But before that, maybe I will also number battens. So I don't need to use the number elements anymore. I can just tag them, sort structural framing roofs. OK, and that's it. And now also I have smart dimensions functionality. And with smart dimensions, I can dimension all of these elements automatically also by the configurations. So this is just a sample group configuration, dimension elements in view that I will show you, but you can configure it in a number of different ways. OK. Yeah, and that's it. And the elements are dimensioned. So these elements are dimensioned. And these roofs. So uh, you can configure this as you need it to be. OK, and uh, yeah, and also we could create assemblies for separate roof slopes if you need that. And all shop drawings for them will be created. And also I forgot to show you the schedule. So we also have, for example, roof framing schedule where all elements are automatically calculated. The part list where the sheeting is calculated, as you can see, and the panels, the joists, all of these elements are calculated automatically. Yes, and you can also see the mass is here. And now also I want to mention that you can also distribute details automatically. To this roof, you would just need to use another tool that is called Smart Details. And for that, I will quickly open another project, which I also framed with Raptor tool. Uh, you can see the same girders uh, and ridge beams are added. But this time, I use eye joists, eye raptors, and these wooden plates and metal details were inserted automatically. Uh, by the Smart Details software. So right here we have Smart Details, which in which is searching for intersection 
intersections between elements that we say, for example, if you can see this chart is inter intersecting with a ridge, please add this detail and this detail. And if it's intersecting with a girder, add this one. And if it's the end, add this one, and so on. So if you're interested in complex details, I would recommend to check out the Smart Details tool as well. It works with all Revit elements almost, not only with the framing elements. Yes, and I think that is all that I wanted to show you today, but don't run away. Those of you who have any questions, I will answer them. Uh, but before, I also would like to mention and I would like to encourage you to download a free trial of the tool. So you can just go ahead to agcad.com and download Tools for BIM Doc. And from there, we will download the doc, you will be able to download trials of our tools, for example, uh, the, this wood framing or metal framing software, because the same is for metal. I just showed you on wood, but everything is the same on metal. And yeah, that's it. So go ahead, download the trial and try it out for yourself. And go ahead and ask me questions if you'll have any after this webinar, and I will try to help you. So thank you, everyone who attended. I hope you, you found this webinar beneficial, and I hope to see you in our future webinars. AGA GAD, Building BIM Together.